So imagine your elementary school student comes home with a spelling list and the child is six years old and the child recognizes a racial slur on a spelling list, share it with you, and then you bring it to the teacher's attention and the teacher has this nonchalant attitude about it. Let's roll the clip. In today's society, it's very prevalent racism. It's very prevalent. Terry Day's six-year-old daughter Rosa is a first grader at Hamilton Elementary in Sanford. Monday, her teacher sent home a spelling list with students that contained a racial slur. This is how the word was supposed to read, bigger, but instead the word began with the letter N. My daughter said to me, she said, I know that word and I know what that word means. She said, but does this supposed to be on my, my paper? She went to speak with the teacher. And I said, well, you didn't you didn't spell check your word, you didn't proofread your word before you sent it out. And she said, well, it is a word. Okay, I didn't like the attitude behind that one. Here's how the teacher explained the mistake to school administrators. She pointed to the keyboard where the B and the N are right next to each other. She says she accidentally typed the N instead of the B. A school spokesman told West 2 Investigates the district is aware of the unintentional and unfortunate mistake. A memo has gone home with students sincerely apologizing for the error. But that's not how the memo reads. The teacher wrote, please throw the blue list away and refer to this list for the next six weeks. I apologize for any inconvenience this may cause. There is no mention of the misspelled word creating a racial slur. She wasn't sorry, wasn't apologetic. Oh my God, I'm so sorry I would remove this. No, it wasn't like that. Terry thinks the teacher owes her students and their parents an apology. Now, when I make videos and I see these stories, I always imagine if it were my child dealing with that particular situation and how would I respond to that? And I get very frustrated with the majority of black folks because they rather continue to deal with the racism than to say, you know what? It is our job as a community to protect our children, to protect their self-esteem, to protect their mind, their psyche, not to deal with racism. We as a community can prevent a lot of that from happening. All we have to do is unify and build schools and hire teachers for our children. And when I say this, of course, the white supremacist trolls, and maybe some of them not white supremacist trolls, they come in and say, oh, well, why you guys wanna segregate? Martin Luther King fought against that. Yeah, and Martin Luther King also said his dream turned into a nightmare, but you're not talking about that. Martin Luther King also said that I integrated my people into a burning building, but you're not talking about that either. The thing is, it's not about segregation. It's not about hate. The fact is when you keep seeing a pattern over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, that racism is always prevalent in the schoolhouses. You have majority Caucasian female teachers, throughout the schools, it's not even a blend of different races of teachers throughout the schoolhouses of America. Why is it a problem for black people to say, you know what, we're going to create our own private schools or charter schools and have our children go there in a environment where they don't have to worry about being called the N word by a teacher or when it's brought to attention of a teacher where well, it is a word, I wouldn't want my kid in that class no more based on that response. It is a word. How dare you say something like that to me? No, my kid would have been out of that class. But of course, like I tell people, y'all, nobody better not mess with mine because I'm gonna cause a problem for you. No, I'm not gonna act a fool with the school and nothing like that. No, I have a platform. I will make trouble for you that way. I put out your name. I put out the school name. I put out the address. I put out the phone number, email. I know how to cause a ruckus very quick for you. You, you're not going to want to work there no more messing with me and my kids. But this is why we got to create schools. And that mentality, that dusty mentality is why we can't do for ourselves. That dusty mentality will rather us have our children be subjected to what you see in this story than to pool our resources together and create things for our children to be safe. 
you know, we rather give all our one trillion dollars to everybody else, but we can't even keep half of it or part of it in our own community to fix our own problems. We are the issue while we are in the condition we're in. Yes, white supremacy has a lot to do with it, but we are in the condition because if we collectively turn around and say, you know what? No more. We're going to stop spending money on designer purses and, and shoes and, and Jordans and the wasteful things that's not going to profit us anything. Take all that money and say, let's build some schools for our children. Let's get some good teachers in our community, male and female. Let's have an Afrocentric school uh, where these children can learn about their history. They can learn science. They can learn math. They can learn skilled trades. They can learn about things in the medical profession. Whatever thing we want to have for them at these schools, where they be prepared uh, when they leave the schools to maybe get jobs, to do whatever. I mean, children shouldn't leave school without knowing how to write resumes, know about credit reports, know about bank accounts. I mean, kids graduating high school don't know nothing. And I believe the schools that we should create should prepare our children to live in this world elementary, junior high, high school. And also you talk about sports, you can compete outside. You don't have to have a, a team at a school. And I believe the schools can help uh, furnish um, the funds so the kids to compete outside of school. So it's always a way um, to do different things. But I'm sick and tired of seeing that with our children. And we have the power to fix it, but we don't. We rather big and big and big people who have proven to us what for over 400 or close to 400 years that they're not going to change. That's the way they feel about you. Maybe not all, I'm not saying all, but majority of them do feel that way about you. When you gonna get the hint, but leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this particular story. Um, would you actually send your daughter or son back to this particular woman's class? Because this situation here is just, beyond what I would even tolerate.